Mark, JP, brilliant to have you. Over the course of the next seven weeks or so, we're going to see some incidents throughout this World Cup, yellow cards, red cards. Talk us through what referees are going to be looking out for with regard to this head contact process. Yeah, I think the when we have it in these games, when we have uh, tackles that involve head contact, the referees will be looking at certain criteria. And I think it's easiest if we just go through a, a couple of demonstrations here. The first one we're going to look at is our classic good tackle. Okay. Okay. So Will is our tackler here. He's going to do a fantastic job. Okay. So we pause it there. The first thing is he's bent at the hips. So what, this is our classic rugby tackle. This is the position we want him in. We want also the arms coming away to wrap the opposing player. Okay, so this is our classic rugby safe rugby tackle and players will generally fall to the ground in a safe manner. Okay, so that great. will be tackle one. Okay, there's going to be situations where there will be head contact where a player might be tap tackled, fall, the tackler will is in a good body position hinged and it just might look like a rugby incident. That's play on. Correct, so the onus will always be on Will as, as the tackler to, to make his, his choice. So we want him bent to the hip and in the case you're talking about, he will have done everything we will have asked of him and the ball carrier will have had a, a late and sudden change of dynamics, such as loss of height or, ch or change of direction. So we wouldn't put much blame on Will there. Okay, right. Talk us through an illegal tackle. Either a TMO or a referee, identify head collision. What does that going to look like? Okay, so when we have an illegal tackle and we go into the head contact process, we'll ask four questions. So if we have an example here, Will doesn't do what we, we want him to wear rugby and he comes in in an upright position, and the ball carrier Rob's put in danger. Here, four questions. Really quickly, is there head contact? Yes, there is. Okay. Is there foul play? Now, in this extreme case here, you can see he's not wrapping, he's upright, he's not protecting the player. So, yes. The next question is who's applying the force and how much is there? Subjective, but Will has left that in the referee's hands. Okay. And the fifth or the fourth question is is there any mitigation? So is there anything that can, can uh, take away the original picture of just Will being illegal? Okay, great. Let's talk about mitigation. So that can be a couple of things. But in mitigation, if, there's, if the tackler is always illegal, mitigation is negated. Is that right? Correct. So there has to be something working in his favour. So if the, if the tackler is bent at the hips, that will mitigate down. If the tackler is looking to wrap in a safe manner, that will mitigate down. From the ball carrier's point of view is if he's done a very, very late change of direction or a change of speed, that can affect an upright tackler where they didn't have the opportunity to change into a different position. And also, if we have another player involved. So in an assist tackle, if someone comes in, hits a player down, Will's in a really good position, but again, he's, he, he c catches someone on the head, there's a likelihood that maybe it's foul play, but it's likely to be reduced from a red card down to a yellow card. Correct. And one of the big things we're looking for is Will to be bent at the hips and for his arms to be in a wrapping position. So the onus will always be on the tackler. He has the option to do these things. OK, a lot to watch out for over the course of the next number of weeks. We're going to see players sitting out for 10 minutes. Let's hope we don't have too many players sitting out for longer than that.